Next presentation, I'm Kelsey Hightower, again from CoreOS. And this is an engineer formerly known as Walden. He doesn't like us to use his government name. I'm not sure why. Um, and what we're going to do is demo upgrading the full uh, Kubernetes stack, yeah. right? So yeah, once you get flex. Kubernetes deployed out in your cluster, how can you upgrade it to the no, next no. version of Kubernetes, right? So this is one of the discussion topics we had within the team is how do you manage Kubernetes itself? So CoreOS, um, by design, we have no package manager, right? So we were built for containers from the very beginning, and we also ship a very uh, simple scheduler called Fleet, and Fleet also serves as our um, package manager and our simple scheduler for deploying things. So what we're gonna see today is we're gonna use, we've actually packaged up all of the Kubernetes components using Rocket. So Rocket is our container um, runtime engine, and we have all the components in Rocket, and we're gonna use Fleet to deploy Kubernetes on top of Rocket, and we're gonna walk through using um, the Omaha protocol through core update to refresh the stack. So I'm gonna turn it over to Walden, and he's gonna walk us through that process. Cool. Ooh. Thanks, Kelsey. Um, so as Kelsey said, I mean, we have Kubernetes deployed here with uh, Rocket and Fleet. Um, I mean, if you don't know what Fleet is, it's a distributed init system, just like it says up there. We're not going to dig into it too far. It runs system to unit files. Um, I know system is kind of a, a dirty word, but it's coming, so get over it. Um, <laughs> so everybody's run Kubernetes before. We've all run the, the guestbook apps, um, just something simple that I can set up an SSH tunnel into my local cluster, and then, oop, uh, then hit some silly port and get Hello there, version 1.0. So there's something running somewhere on my laptop. Can you see that OK? Yeah, sort of. Um, anywho, so we've got Kubernetes cluster running, if you believe me, it's there. Um, to prove it, uh, kubectl list minions. Oh, get minions. There it is. So we've got three node cluster, um, got stuff running in it. We've got replication controllers. We've got pods. We've got services. Things are there. So going back to what this little app was, um, you can clearly see there's this thing called hello. Um, I've just got an SSH tunnel set up so I can hit this um, service port and see something happening. So uh, as Kelsey, um, Kelsey said earlier, we're actually more interested in the, the upgrade strategy for Kubernetes. And I know there's been a lot of discussion around this as far as um, how upgrades should work. Should it be turtles all the way down? Should it be two separate tools? Should somebody have to walk up to the machine and push a button or something? And we'll figure it out. But uh, for now, we've started to uh, get our approach together, um, which is built on Fleet, built on Rocket, built on all these tools. Um, but we actually have. Uh, a commercial product that we built to drive our operating system. Um, if you don't know, we're CoreOS. We built an operating system. It's really small. It's great. It keeps you secure from Poodle, Heartbleed, whatever the next vulnerability is going to be. Um, but we built this tool to help manage our entire deployment deployment of uh, CoreOS. So. Um, Core Update is using, sorry, the, the product is called Core Update. It uses something called the Omaha Protocol. Omaha Protocol is what, um, I don't know if it came out of Google, but Google Chrome uses it to keep browsers up to date across the world. Uh, we use the same approach to keep CoreOS up to date across the world. So it's simple enough to apply the same sort of heuristics to keeping Kubernetes up to date uh, at the cluster level. Um, so going back to this dashboard here, this is not a Kubernetes dashboard, this is a core update dashboard. Um, so you're not going to see pods, you're not going to see services, you're going to see three important things. There's CoreOS, the operating system, there's Kubernetes, the, the thing we're all here to talk about, and then there's this thing called Hello World. And if you haven't connected the dots yet, there's something saying hello to me right here. So um, if we take Omaha, which allows individual deployments to say, I'm at this version, what version should I be running, and then do something with that information, um, we should be able to see statistics about what versions are running out in the world. We should have some level of control over um, what's running in the world. Um, right here, see, I'm sorry, this is kind of hard to see. Um, you see this little number right here. Oh, wow. It's 0.10.1. That's the, it's two tags back um, in the Kubernetes tree. So we've got a cluster running version 0.10.1. Um, like I said, this is an update dashboard, so you should be able to update something. Um, I'm going to first prove this is actually running uh, version 0.10.1. Um, run my little kubectl version tool, and there it is, server version 
major zero, minor 10. So there's something happening here. I go in and actually run my upgrade. It's as simple as, again, sorry for the resolution, uh, clicking 0.11.0, which is the next version, saving it, and then something happens. I don't know what. Um, so if we dig into it a little bit further, right now we still have, it says 10, this is dumb data from before when I was trying to get this demo working, hiding in the room over there. Um, we see 0.10.1, uh, kubectl version, like, well, the API server isn't up, apparently. There's nothing serving my requests. So we sit here long enough, we'll actually come back up with version 0.10.0. We can apply the same approach to applications running on top of Kubernetes. Um, so this hello world application here, you see just one of them, and that's the one that I've got running on my laptop. Um, it's probably not in a super healthy state right now because Kubernetes just got pulled out from under it, but we should be able to upgrade this just like we did uh, Kubernetes. So using the same super high resolution modal, we can upgrade it. And let's go see if Kubernetes is back, actually back up. So if we hit Kubernetes, view all graphs, no, it's still 0.10.1. Well, there we go, kubectl is reporting version 11 now. So we got Kubernetes to officially upgrade. And if we go look at our reporting, in classic Nemo fashion, it doesn't work. Well, it'll work here in just a second. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay, well, let's not prolong this. It'll show 0.11.0 as soon as I walk over there. <laughs> Um, and I think that's all I have for you.